Welcome to a simplex converted to a Great Western Railway Prairie Tank, part 73. Lagging the boiler with a modern alternative to asbestos. This stuff is not the same as asbestos, it's not quite as strong, but it does the job, and of course it's not likely to kill you anytime soon. Before I start the job, I need to look at it in detail. Originally this had a dummy firebox, the square type, known I believe as a bell pair firebox. This is just a piece of very thin brass cladding and I couldn't believe how bad it was originally. The front part where it's supposed to blend into the tapered part of the boiler was very crudely made from sanded down car body filler. Which of course had cracked away from the main boiler wrapper. I think I will also simulate this square firebox just because it looks good but in a different way. I'm not going to make it part of the boiler. I will attach it to the cab and superstructure. In a very similar manner to the Chinese 14XX locomotive that I worked on a while back. Both of these pieces of boiler cladding are really badly made and are of no use to me at all. This original cladding was made using two pieces of brass sheet. Instead of using this method I propose to clad the boiler in the normal way and then add another piece of cladding at the firebox end. This model is a simplex locomotive designed by Martin Evans, a really good proven design, and the fact that it's sort of going to resemble a prairie tank is just a bonus. I'm removing these washout covers because I can reuse these on the wrapper that I make for the firebox. And this wrapper is no good to me at all, so I'm going to throw it in the bin. I received a large box this morning from Blackgate's Engineering and inside the large box was the smaller box. The smaller box contains the boiler banding which will hold the brass wrapper in place and it's 3 sixteenths of an inch diameter wide. I also bought a new pressure gauge. I'm going to run this locomotive at 80 pounds per square inch working pressure. This pressure gauge reads up to 120 but that's so the needle is somewhere in the mid range. If it was just a 0 to 80 pounds per square inch gauge, the needle would be hard over when the engine was blowing off. And that makes it more difficult to read. Also inside the main large box were these. Two pieces of brass sheet to make the cladding out of. Why two? Well, originally I thought I would buy two in case I make a mess of one of them. But I will really try hard not to do that. Underneath the brass cladding is a much larger sheet of the heat insulation material. And the first thing I need to do is know how big a hole to cut in the middle and where to cut it for the steam dome. I'm using a felt tip marker pen to mark the size. I need to cut a piece of this heat insulation material which is 18 inches square. And the first thing I need is a centre line. This black mark that crosses the centre line is a measurement from the front of the boiler to the front of the steam dome. With the measurement that I obtained earlier, I went round the workshop and found a piece of aluminium with a hole in the middle which makes it even better because I can see the line, which was more or less exactly the right size as the steam dome, or should I say as the boiler bush of the steam dome. Once I'd drawn round the piece of metal, I just cut it out with an old pair of scissors. I could have used a craft knife or a smaller pair of scissors, but either way I managed to cut the hole and it fits very well over the bush around the base of the steam dome. I haven't marked the positions for the safety valves because you don't need to do that. All you do is press hard on the ceramic material where the safety valve bushes are and you get a perfect imprint of the bushes where the safety valves fit. All that's left to do is to cut the two holes for the safety valve bushes and two slots, one to accommodate the turret and the other one to accommodate the water gauge extension. This worked out quite well, the only problem I ran into was that the blower pipe was in the way. I need to re-bend this once the job's finished. So the easiest way to do that is to remove it entirely and sort that out at a later date. To fix the lagging to the boiler, I find it a good idea to use masking tape. It will of course dry up and drop off with the heat of the boiler over time, but for the moment it's just enough to hold the lagging in place. Welcome to A Beginner's Guide to Mummification. I really am much happier once I get this masking tape on. Because don't forget this ceramic wool is very easily damaged, you can rub it away with your finger, so this gives some protection when I'm going to be handling the boiler. If you've never done this before, you may find it difficult. I still find it difficult, and I've mentioned this in a previous video, 
that I'm okay with things that keep still. I really do not get along with things that move around and won't keep still when I'm trying to work on them. I really admire people who can make suits and clothing and things like that. I even struggle sewing buttons on my trousers. If you watch almost everything that I do, when I'm handling a component, it's not moving around. And I suppose that this principle also applied to my two previous wives. And this moving about business also applies to some of the girlfriends when I was a younger man. I know I've said this before, but I think necrophilia would have been a good solution. The more that this ceramic material stops moving around, the happier I'm getting. The masking tape's still moving around a bit because it doesn't stick very well to it. And I know it looks horrible, but some of this is going to be cut away. There's not very much clearance between the firebox and the frames. I even had to grind away some of the blowdown valve bushes to actually get the boiler into the frames. The next part of the job is to cut the cladding material to fit this accurately. I need to make a template out of a piece of thick card. And I don't mean corrugated cardboard like you would find in a cardboard box. I need some specific card. I'll have a look online when I finish this edit. It's nice to see the boiler looking much more thermally efficient. And that's it for this video. I'd just like to say, as I always do, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.